Hi and welcome to Demon Questions from On Maths, where we look at the more challenging GCSE Maths questions. Enjoy! The way you structure this is there's 20 marks on each Demon um, paper. We're either doing non-calculator or calculator, higher or foundation. And within those 20 marks, I've evenly distributed the uh, topics and I've evenly distributed the grade. So it starts at a low grade and gets higher. I've also put the grade boundaries on so you can roughly estimate whereabouts you are. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. This is quite an unusual question because it's asking us to find the mean from a bar line graph. Now, what I would do is I'd first of all just start drawing a table for this information because I'm used to finding the mean from a table, so that's what I'm going to do. And so we've got pets, we've got the frequency, and we'll worry about the last column in a second. So zero pets, the frequency is six. One pet, the frequency is 10. Two pets, the frequency is six. Three pets, frequency is 6 and 4 pets frequency is 1. Now to find the mean you add an fx column and I always call this whatever is here x and I always call the frequency f so it's the fx column and you just times them together. So it's just a way of finding out those 6 that were 0 well how many is that in total well that's going to be 0. Those 10 that had 1 pet how many pets is that in total? 10 those six um, people who had two pets, well how many pets are there in total? Well two times six which is twelve. Uh, there were six people with three pets, so that's eighteen pets altogether. And there was one person with four, uh, four pets, so that's four altogether. Then what you want to do is you want to add up the fx column. And we do that with a little e symbol, it just means sum of. So I'm going to do that on the calculator now. So zero plus ten plus twelve plus eighteen plus which is 44. You also want to add up the frequency column, so sum of frequency. So it sometimes tells you in the question how many there are, so just double check that. So I'm going to add those together, so that's 29. Now, the mean is all of the stuff added together over how many there are. So you kind of want to swap these over. Okay. So it's 44 over, which means divide, 29. So 44 divided by 29. And it comes up with a fraction in the calculator, so just press S to D. And that equals 1.5172, blah, blah, blah. It asks for two decimal places, so to two decimal places, that is 1.52, because that 7 moves that 1 up. Okay, so this question mixing algebra and areas and perimeters, um, and quite a standard question on the exam, quite a standard difficult question on the exam, but the method of working out is always the same. Um, what you need to do is uh, find out what the perimeter for this triangle is in algebra, find out what it is as a number, and just get those equal to each other. This will make sense as we go on. So the perimeter is the distance around the shape. So if you pick a point, I'm going to pick here, and just walk around the shape. And so it's going to be x minus 1 there. And keep walking. And I'm going to add it on to 4x plus 1. And keep walking. And we're going to add a 4x. So the perimeter is just all the sides added. Now, as a number, it says that it is 144. And there we go. We've got ourselves an equation to be able to solve and find out what x is. I probably need longer lines than that. So, we're going to collect the like terms on the left-hand side. So, we've got an x plus a 4x plus a 4x, which will be 9x. Then we've got a minus 1 plus 1, that's nothing, and there's nothing left. So it's just 9x equals 144. 
Okay, now to get rid of the 9, we need to divide by 9 because that's a times 9 on the x. So we're going to do 144 divided by 9, which is 16. So x equals 16. Okay, so we find out what x is, which is a good start, but it doesn't answer the question yet because we need to use that information to find out what the area of the triangle is. Well, this bottom one here says 4x, so we're going to do 4 times 16, which is 64. So we know the length of that is 64. This one here uh, says x minus 1, so we're going to do 16 minus 1, which is 15. Now to work out the area, we're going to do half times base times height. We've worked out that the base is 64 and the height is 15. So we're going to do 0.5 times 64 times 15 and it gives me the answer of 480, which is my answer. Now it says it's in centimeters, uh, it says the perimeter is in centimeters and it says work out what value of A is. Now the value of A is the number before the units so I don't have to put units on this, but you don't lose a mark if you put units on it as well, which would be centimetres squared. Okay, so we have a quite a tricky looking question. Um, now, this is the same question as what I'm about to draw. Um, so if I draw the big triangle, and I draw the small triangle separately, And if I just say that they are similar, which means one is a direct enlargement of the other, it becomes a much easier question. Now, whenever you see this question here, always just draw it as two separate triangles and try and fill in the lengths. So the small triangle has a height of 2, a right angle here, and a width of, or a base of x. And the big one has a height of 6, now the width is going to be x plus 4, okay, and that's going to be key in answering this question. Okay, so because they're an enlargement, we've got to work out the scale factor. So what do I times the 2 by to get to the 6? So the scale factor is going to be 6 divided by 2, always bigger divided by smaller, which is 3. Okay, so I times anything on the smaller triangle by 3 to get uh, the length on the bigger triangle. So we've got x here, and what do I times it by to get to the new length? Well, I times it by 3. So I know that 3x is the same as x plus 4. So I've got myself a little equation here to solve. So first thing, if you've got x on both sides, you always take away the small amount of x. So I'm going to take away x from both sides so to get 2x equals 4. Let's extend the lines a little bit. And I'm going to divide by 2 both sides to get x on its own. So x equals 2. Now let's see if that works. So if x was 2, this length here would be 2, and this length here would be 6. And we know that 2 times 3 is 6. So we know it's the right answer. So the length of x is 2. And there's loads of different other ways you could do this one. You could do it through trial improvement. And there are a few other techniques. But I think the method I've shown you here will work with any of this type of question. This isn't the simplest question. In fact, it's probably the most complex question that you can get uh, on um, this kind of similarity. The important thing to realize is if you ever see this kind of question with a triangle in another one, you should be thinking, are they similar? And anything that looks like this will involve this triangle being similar, which means that there is a scale factor to this triangle. There are a few different ways of answering this question. I'm going to show you what I feel is the easiest technique. Um, but if you've got a different technique, you get the same answer, then stick with it. Um, this question will all be about multipliers and understanding how to use them. But the difficulty in this question is we're finding out how long it will take um, to get to a certain point, um, which is a big twist in this question, and we're not given a quantity. 
Now, whenever you're not given a quantity, one method of being able to do it is by putting in your own quantity. And the easiest quantity to put in is the number 100. So I'm going to pretend that the population of the town at the start is 100. Now, this question, as I said, is all about multipliers. So we need to figure out what a decrease of 6.5% as a multiplier is. And to do multiplier, you start off with 100%. You do whatever the question is saying, so this time we're decreasing by 6.5%. And this will be on the calculator paper, so you might as well use your calculator to do 100 take away 6.5, and hopefully the answer is 93.5%. And to convert it into a multiplier, you just divide by 100. You're just converting it to a decimal, but the uh, paper will call it a multiplier. That would be 0.935. So whenever I time something by 0 0.935, I've decreased it by 6.5%. Okay, so we've got our 100. And what I want to do is figure out how many times I need to multiply it by 0 0.935. Okay, so there's a power here which we don't know yet. To get the answer um, that is less than... 47% of it. Well, the reason I pick 100 um, as my uh, quantity I've made up is because 100 is nice and easy because 47% of 100 is 47. So we need it to be less than 47. Now, what I do on my calculator is I type in 100 and I times by 0 0.935 and I get the answer of 93.5. Um, now, what I'm going to do now, and that's one time, what I'm going to do now is press answer times 0 0.935. And what that will do is allow me to go through um, this same calculation as many times as I want by just pressing the equals button. So I'm going to press the equals button once, and I get the answer of 87.42. So I've done twice in total so far, and I can leave a little tally mark here. I press it again and I get 81.7, again 76.4, again 71.4, again 66.8, again 62.4, so I'm getting closer, again 58.4, again 54.6, again 51, I'm getting close, Again, 47.7, so I'm getting very, very close, but I'm not quite there yet. And I press it one more time, and I get 44.6. So in total, I've done it 12 times. Now, I'll, I'll always want to check that, because my counting is not necessarily the best when under pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do 100 times 0 0.935 to the power of 12 to check that I've got this right. So 100 times... 0.935 to the power of 12 and I get 44 point so 44.64 and I'm just going to check that that was uh, the first time it went under so I'm going to do to the power of 11 and what I can do is just use just scroll through my working out on the calculator and change the 12 to 11 and press equal and that's 47.744 blah 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 okay and each of these are rounded okay so it's going to take 12 years, because 11 years gets us close, but not quite over the line. It's the 12th year that it dips below 47%. Now, as I said, there are different methods. You don't need to include the 100 uh, as a made-up value. Um, what you can do is just look at the multiplier and wait until the multiplier is 0 0.47 or below. Or, sorry, below 0.47. Um, and the multiplier would go down to 0 0.4464, blah, 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 blah. And that's absolutely fine method. Um, and there are other ways of doing divisions, which I'm not going to go into because you don't need to go that far. Um, because when you hit A level, there's a much, much better way of doing it. But we don't go through it at GCSE. Um, if you wanted to look into it, it's to do with logarithms. But we won't go into that. Okay, so for this question, this is all about linear area and volume scale factor. So, with this question, from B to A, we can work out the linear scale factor. So, what do I times 5 by to get to 10? So, the linear scale factor 
is going to be um, big take, uh, divided by small, which is 2. Now the area scale factor is always the square of the linear scale factor. So we square it and it's going to be 4. The volume scale factor is always the cube of the linear scale factor. So we cube the linear scale factor and it's 8. So with this first question, it says cuboid B has the volume of 80. So if B has 80, the volume of A is going to be 80 times the volume scale factor, which is 8. So that's going to be 64 with a 0, so 640. And it's that simple. This one here, it says cuboid A has a total surface area of 440. So work out the uh, surface area for B. Now this is um, surface area this time. So it's going to be 440. Now because we're going from bigger to smaller, we're going to divide by the scale factor. And it's the area scale factor we need, which is going to be uh, the 4. So we do uh, 440 divided by 4, which is hopefully 110. And it's that simple. So you just got to remember that if you have a linear scale factor, you square it to find the area scale factor, and you cube it to find the volume scale factor. Okay, so this question seems really complicated because the just sheer amount of words, but actually it's quite a simple question um, when you get your head around it. So um, the first question we're looking at uh, a bag or two bags of letters um, and one bag of numbers. And so there are 26 letters in the alphabet, so there's 26 options for this first bag. There will be 26 options for the second bag, and uh, numbers from 0 to 9. Now, we've got to be careful here, because 0 is counted, so there are 10 numbers in that bag, because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but there's also 0, so that's 10 in total. And to get the amount of combinations, all we do is 26 times 26 times 10, and we will have a calculator for this, so 26 times 26 times 10, which is uh, 6,760, which seems quite a lot, but there we go. Uh, this next one is, so he wants to um, use four digits, but limit the combinations. So we just got to read the question. His letter bags now contain the letters A to F, so that's A, B, C, D, E, F, which is six. So these both will contain six and only contain even numbers greater than zero. Now, these are the same bags as before, so we only had the numbers from zero to nine before. So the even numbers uh, that are greater than zero, so it's two, four, six, eight. So there's four combinations. So there's four numbers those can be. And so find out how many different passwords, um, if they're arranged like this, so six times four times four times six. So six times four times four, times 6, which is 576. Now, that might seem confusing that there's an extra um, digit to the password and yet less combinations, but if you think about it, there's significantly less letters and less numbers, um, so that's why it's a much lower number than part A. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you really liked it, click like. If you really, really liked it and want to see more, click subscribe. Um, all these uh, questions are on our website, onmaths.com. So if you go to onmaths.com, go to Steam and Questions, you can have a go on this paper yourself. Uh, obviously the numbers change, like everything on onmaths, so you can keep trying it again and again until you get full marks. Thank you very much.